Welcome, friends, to another product showcase. This is my lovely assistant bearing the final piece of AMD's R7 and R9 series graphics card launch. You might be thinking that this is the 290X, but no. That, my friends, is the 290X, and you can clearly see that it's quite different. You would be wrong to think that the 290 is the 290X. No, I'm good, thank you. We are going to be talking about the 290 and what it brings to the table versus the rest of the R7 and R9 series today. So why are we so excited about the R9 290? This is a pared down version of the Hawaii GPU, the same Hawaii XT based chip that is found in the 290X. However, this is called Hawaii Pro. So they both support true audio, Mantle, DirectX 11.2, and look at this. Look, Ma, no fingers. Ah! No, I got no crossfire fingers. But don't worry, the pins are still there. AMD did all the testing necessary to ensure that these cards will perform the same in Crossfire or better versus the older implementations that have Crossfire bridges. Instead, they communicate through the PCI Express bus. So that is the large connector down here, and it works just fine, even down to dual 8x PCIe Gen 2, although these have full support for PCIe Gen 3. They are also both getting four gigs of DDDR5 memory on a 512-bit bus. So yes, a full 16 RAM chips on the back of the card in order to get all that bandwidth for next generation gaming at greater than HD resolutions such as 2.5K and 4K. Now, how has it been cut down exactly? Well, stream processors for one thing. It has 2,560 versus 2,816 on that other thing that Jack left with. It also has a lower maximum clock speed, so it's 947 megahertz max versus 1 gigahertz max on the 290X. That means compute performance is around 4.9 teraflops versus 5.6. And as for pricing, check out the link in the video description because the 290, given its cut down nature, is cut down in terms of pricing as well, making it a more value optimized option. If you don't need the latest and the absolute greatest and top of the tierest performance, this, my friends, is the one to look at. Now, it was supposed to be released on Halloween, but there's been a whole lot of shots fired back and forth between AMD and NVIDIA lately. There's price moves and new product announcement. Everything's been all crazy in the GPU space right now, so it did get pushed back a little bit, and the rumor I heard was that AMD was tuning driver performance to make the 290 even more competitive right up to the very last minute. So in conclusion, there's not too much to say about the 290. It's more of the same that was already quite excellent. So it's based on the same GCN architecture as of course the 290X and the last generation 7000 series, meaning that game developers are gonna be pretty used to working with it, although Mantle really is the, uh, the, the, the lucky horseshoe wedged in the engine or helping the engine, or we don't know what it's gonna do yet, but what we do know is that Battlefield 4 is going to be supporting Mantle, and Mantle is either going to be a huge deal for these cards or maybe not a huge deal, and we will find out in December. So thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips on the Radeon R9 290. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com.